Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video, thank you all the members, all the patrons, make sure to subscribe, we are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers and let's get into it. As I did on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, I did a video talking a little bit about the comparisons or the counters that the US and the Soviets can receive in the soonish future, right? And I wanted to make a series of videos talking about specifics 1v1s that we will probably see being added kinda together even for these specific two nations. We can do more nations later, but I wanted to do these counters first for these two nations, okay? So we're going to start simple and small and with basically what is most likely going to be the next step in the evolution. I think, in my personal opinion, I could be completely wrong, but I do think that in a soonish future they will add more advanced variants of the MiG-29 and the F-16. It's the most likely thing to happen, actually, I think. As I said, in my opinion. So, we're going to talk about the MiG-29S versus the F-16C. So first of all, what are those two versions of those aircraft? First, the MiG-29S. It is a late 80s upgrade program to the normal 912s and 913s, the original MiG-29s. Um, but the differences are mainly two. You know, there are other differences like extra weight for payloads and stuff like that. But we're going to focus on being a very short video or as shorter as possible. But the main differences were the fly-by-wire system. Remember, the MiG-29 has kind of a hybrid system of normal cable hydraulic systems together with a, a fly-by-wire that you can turn off, um, doing kind of a damping on the, 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 the aircraft for you not to break it, you know? So uh, it has an improved system on that. So the safety limit for normal operations and training and stuff for doctrine was increased to uh to 28 degrees of aoa so it can pull a little bit more uh, and he also had the improved n019m rubin which is an improved n019 radar that we already see it is basically the same radar but it just has better eccm something that it doesn't matter too much in the game uh, but the main thing about this radar is that it was capable of using the r77 okay so, of course, we still have the 912 and the 913 fuselages, so we have the 912S with less fuel and no internal ECM, and the 913S with more fuel and internal ECM. Not a lot of them were built in the Soviet times, but uh, it's still a very important version of the MiG-29 before we go to something like a MiG-29M or K or SMT or whatever, right? Or even MiG-35 or something like that. But then we have the F-16C, simplifying uh, very much, you know, there is three major things done to the C from the A. The one was the APG-68 radar instead of the 66, so high PIF modes and increased in range with uh, also the TWS modes. So yeah, overall better radar, still a very small compact radar, so don't expect anything amazing from it, but it is way better with its high PRF mode and the TWS than the original 66. A completely new cockpit with different avionics, including a glass cockpit kind of situation happening there, which is very cool. Uh, and also there were some, uh, the, one of the main things that everybody talks about, the third major differences between the C's from the A's, is that we have the, uh, from the C's we have normally the, from the dead area of the Cold War, not gonna talk too much about the future, we normally have the block 25, 30, 32, 40, 42, 50, 52, right? So the 30, the 40, and the 50, the zeros, right? They receive the new engine, the G F110 engine, which is a little bit stronger in afterburner than the original PW. So these are the three major differences. There are minor differences between the 25 to the 30, 32, for example. So the 30 had the new engine, the 32 had the old engine, but the 25 wasn't able to use the AGM-45, apparently, according to the F16.net site. Uh, the Block 40 and 42 got the new uh, Lantern pod, the Block 50 and 52 got GPS, INS systems for navigation and more weapon systems like the AGM-88, the JDAM and other stuff like that. So these are all from the late 80s too, okay? From the Block 30 being from 1987, Block 40, 1988, and Block 50, 1991. They became a little bit heavier with the new blocks, so you will see a decrease in performance uh, the higher the block is, okay? 
but it is the perfect counter to the MiG 29S, which is also from 1987 to 1991. The program kind of ran through those years in the Soviet times, right? In the performance department, they are very, very similar. I mean, uh, especially the versions with the G engines. So uh, the 912S and the Block 30, for example, they had basically the same thrust weight in normal takeoff uh, weight uh, of around 1.11. So basically the same. And the 913S, together with the Block 50, they basically have the same uh, thrust to weight as well in normal takeoff weight of around 1.09. So very, very close to each other. They have basically the same max speed and basically the same range. The MiG being 30 kilometers faster on the deck than the F-16 and F-16 having 100 kilometers of range more without external fuel tanks than the MiG. Around 1500 to 1600 if respectively. If, uh, respect respectively <laughs> from the MiG-29 to the F-16. The turn rate, we can see that the F-16 turns a little bit less according to Gordon Yeffing, um, around 21.5 uh, degrees per second, while the MiG does 23.5. But this could be the um, the comparisons between the 912 against the Block 50. There are minor nuances here that can be considered problematic and we will need to wait until these things are in the game to actually be able to compare it. By the way, I got this chart from the turn rates from a maximum turn per degrees, you know. So uh, at the instantaneous turn, the MiG-29 wins, but at the continuous turn, the F-16 wins. So always remember that I forgot to include that in the normal recording that I did. So I'm recording this afterwards. So let's get back to it. But just remember that, okay? The acceleration of the MiG-29 was just 0.5 seconds faster between 600 and 1,000 kilometers per hour at 1,000 meters. So very, very similar as well. Um, it was around, let me check. It was 13.5 uh, seconds uh, in acceleration from that. And the F-16 was 14. So yeah, pretty, pretty fast, right? Pretty fast aircraft. Um, the sensor should be very similar as well, with the improved APG-68 being more on par with the ranges managed on the N019, right? Having also the high PRF modes and also TWS helps a lot the pilot not only engaging farther away distances targets, but also maintaining a lock properly and just overall having more situational awareness with the TWS, right? The fire control systems of the MiG have one advantage and while the F-16 has another one. So, the MiG-29 has the IRST, obviously always helpful, and F-16, in theory, can fire four missiles at the same time with the M120. Obviously, this is kind of debatable. Some people claim that it is only two as well, but if this is true, according to Gordon Yeffins, it is. Um, I will leave the, the, the ISBN of the book that I read about these aircraft uh, on the description, and I use the F-16.net site as well that I'm going to leave in the description as well. Uh, but yeah, basically, at least two of those uh, A120s and R-77s could be able to be fired at the same time from both aircraft. And the F-16, they claim it's four as well. And uh, the MiG has around 10 kilometers more in range, but it depends on situation. And there is not much of a difference that you will not notice. The APG-68 is pretty, pretty good radar. Uh, very similar to the N019. And then we go for the weapons department. Uh, here we have an option on how the F-16C would look like in the, basically in the, in the, in the, in the payload, right? On the secondary weapons department over here. So obviously A9Ls, it's already added to the game. We added the AIM-7M, obviously a missile that is already added. Same limitation as the Ace, you see, two, only two missiles of those. We added also the AIM-7MH, it can be also using the AIM-7P, but it is kind of difficult to find information if it was actually used in the Air Force, the P variant. So if not, the MH should be fine, having a little bit more range and just being a better missile overall, you would bridge the gap a little bit to the uh, R-27ER. So yeah, as well, two of them. Of course, in the future, AIM-9Ms are going to be added. We added the AIM-9 because the initial Ms are not that different from the Ls. The main difference between the initial Ms and the Ls are just the smokeless engine and basically the IRCCM, uh, the improved seeker and stuff. Uh, but the turn rate and stuff like that, it is basically the same. 
uh, not the turn rate, but the G's is basically the same. So he only turns 30 G's as well, according to most sources. Um, but these later versions, like the M9, the M8, and the M90, uh, were being able to turn a little bit more. So 35, even more. Some sources even claim 40, but I never found a proper source confirming that. Normally, it's just 35 G's, according to the F16.net and some other things that you can find on Google, basically. Uh, then, obviously, if we are going to see these aircraft, we will probably see in the future the addition of the modern Fox 3 missiles. We added two of them here, uh, the B initially. Of, of course, it would be one of the initial ones, the A or B. The B would be it's just a tiny difference, so why not add just the B? And, of course, the C3 would be the first one that has a, a little bit of an improvement in the range. Uh, they say that it should be having a 30 kilometer range at six kilometers of altitude at Mach 1. So this is a very good range. It's, I mean, closer to what we see in the ER than what we see in the, I mean, even the M7F could reach those ranges. So it's basically what we already have in game. But if we need more to counter the R77, the C3 would have a little bit of more range due to the smaller fins. And obviously, in the future, of course, we can see the C5 having more properly, more engine and more, you know, uh, capabilities as well. Remember, these missiles turn 28 G, uh, Gs, so very, very good missiles and Fox 3s, obviously. And for the air to ground, obviously, drop tanks, napalms, Mark 82s, Mark 84s, all sorts of guided bombs to be guided with the Lightning 2 pod. So uh, you see here GBUs, basically laser guided mainly bombs, right? of course, uh, and then uh, TV-guided missiles like the gm 65 d right, with thermals and stuff, so it would be very, very cool to see this. If we see a more modern version of the 30, uh, we can see other weapons being added to this air-to-ground role. Everything else should be around the same, okay? Uh, so, yeah, and some Mighty Mouses as well. And then the, the, the last thing that we're going to talk about, MiG-29S, the secondary weapons of it as well, Obviously, R60Ms would be the first missiles that you get in the stock and stuff. So, yeah, just the normal R60s. Uh, of course, R73s, I think they could be added as well. If we are uh, receiving 9Ms, uh, the R73 will probably be added as well. The same limitation goes for the semi-active missiles, only two of them. And then you can use the ETs as well. Uh, of course, we can use the Rs and Ts as well over here, but there's no much reason... The ERs are already in game, the ETs would be added as well. So, yeah, just two missiles as well. You can carry two of them plus four R73s, just like the normal uh, MiG 29s. But the catch is here that you can also carry six Fox 3 missiles, so the R77. It should have a little bit of a more range than the AIM 120s, and it should be a little bit more maneuverable than the 120s, at least these earlier versions. Uh, according to most sources, it is around 70 kilometers. So I talked about how the uh, M120 was 30, but that was at 6 kilometers. So around 10 kilometers of altitude, it would be around 50 to 60 kilometers, right? And the R77 would be at the same altitude, 10 kilometers, around 70 kilometers, 60 kilometers. Um, maybe at lower altitudes, it would be more like 50 as well, 60, you know. So uh, maybe even last 40 or something like that at 6, 5 kilometers of altitude. So it is still a very, very large range. But I still think that ER should have a little bit more range than the 77, depending on the situation. But yeah, and they should turn 30 Gs instead of the 28 of the M120s. On the air-to-ground department, it is where the F-16 is just way better than the MiG-29. We just have basically unguided stuff, so unguided rockets, S-24s and S-8s, uh, 5 to 50s, the M-54 version from 1954 and the M-62 from 1962 as well. The 62 vari variant is the most advanced one, and fab fi uh, 500s as well with those uh, options as well. And of course the drop tank. So this would pretty much wrap it up. And I don't know, they feel like very good comparisons to each other. Um, I still think that the Block 25 should have been added uh, to counter the 912 and 913 that we have in game right now. But they can make it up with it, uh, with the Block 30 at least, and the when the MiG-29S comes. I think it would be fair to say that it would be very, very much comparable to each other. 
But basically, this is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you like these type of videos, okay? I'll see you guys in the next one, and bye. See you.